In this video I'll be showing you how you can create these layered three-dimensional designs using Inkscape. I've got three different color palettes here. If you'd like to learn how to do this, stick with us. So I've opened up a clean document. First thing I want to do is create the squares for the background. So I'm going to come up, grab my rectangles tool. I want to hold down control to constrain the proportion so we can pull out a, a perfect square and I'm just going to drag out a square so it nicely fills our page. So I want to create several layers. I'm going to duplicate this three times. So I'm going to get my selection tool. So the first square I want to make quite bright, uh, quite a bright yellow. I'm going to press Ctrl D to duplicate. Then I'm going to make this one quite light. Press Ctrl D to duplicate again. This one I'm going to do quite dark. Control D to duplicate again, and this one I'm going to do quite light. So now that I've got my squares produced, next thing I want to do is draw some circles that we can cut out of these layers. So I'm going to come over to my circles and ellipse tool. I'm going to hold down um, Control to constrain it, the proportions, so we can drag out a perfect circle. And I'm going to change the colour so we can actually see it, which always helps. So I'm going to change to my selection tool. I want to snap these so the circle's dead centre in our square. So if we come up to our um, snapping menu, we'll click on the triangle so we've got our snapping menu. If you haven't got the full snapping menu like this and you've only got the basic version, you can just click on advanced mode at the bottom and that will give you the full snapping menu. In here, I want to make sure that the centres of the circle and the square snap together. So we want to have object midpoints um, enabled and we need to make sure that snapping is enabled at the top. So with that done, we can click over here. Now I can just drag the circle until the midpoint snap like that. Now that they've snapped together, I want to make this slightly larger. So I want to scale it around the center. I want to make sure the proportions stay the same. So I'm going to hold down Control to constrain the proportions and I'm going to hold down Shift so we scale around the center. And then we can just drag that out till it's a nice size. I want to duplicate this again. So I'm going to press Control D to duplicate. I'm going to change the color so we can see it. And then holding down Control and Shift again, we're going to scale it in till it's fairly small. That's so big. Next thing I want to do is cut these circles out of the layers. So I'm going to select my top square. I'm going to hold down Shift. I'm going to select the larger circle. And I'm going to come up to Path and down to Difference to cut the circle away from the square. Now I'm going to select the layer underneath, which is the dark brown one. Hold down Shift, select the circle. And then I'm going to come up to Path again and down to difference once again. So now we've created these top two layers with holes in. What I want to do next is to make a series of layers with decreasing holes and um, getting smaller. So the way I'm going to do that is I'll click off so I know what I'm doing. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to select the first layer and I'm going to select the dark brown layer behind. I'm then going to come up to extensions, down to generate from path and then down to interpolate. Now in here we want to turn on live preview we need to make sure that exponent's set to 1. That just means that the circles go down in an even fashion. The photo I'm working on, I want there to be five different sheets. So interpolation steps, I've got set to 5. I've got it set to discard extra nodes for longer paths. This seems to work better. I don't want to duplicate the end paths, so I've got that one unchecked. But I want to interpolate the style, which gives us the graduating colours. And I want to use the Z order. So with all that done, I'm quite happy with the results. I have in the past used this and found that it distorts the circles. Um, if you get that and you can't get it to work, then I'm afraid you'll have to go through and create the sheets individually. But thankfully this time it's worked for me, so I'm going to apply that. So now we've created all of our different layers, the next thing I want to do is import some photos that we can use for reference to draw out the different elements of our image. So I'm going to come up to File, down to Import, and in here I've got a selection of photos. These are all taken from Pixabay. You can use what you want, but these are just the images that I chose. So now I've got all my reference images. I'm just going to lay these out so we can see them all. I'm going to turn snapping off because it's making me jump about a little bit. Oh, still got it on. There we go. And what I'm going to do is just trace out the different elements that I want to use in my image. So I want this image of these people on a boat, so I'm going to trace that out. I want the stork or crane or whatever it is down here. I think that'll look nice. And I'm going to use some of these background mountains and the edge of the water on this image. 
And over on this one, I think I'm going to use the clouds and we can make a circle for the sun. So I'm just going to go through these one at a time. We start with the crane down the bottom, I think. So I'll just zoom into that. And then we can just trace it out using our Bezier pen tool. If you're not familiar with using the Bezier pen and the nodes tool together, watch the video I've linked in the top right hand corner and that will run you through everything you need to know. So I've just deleted the image behind so I'm just left with my little outline. Now I'm just reducing the opacity of this, this shape because I want to chop out where the, the gap is under the legs. I've got my selection tool. If we hold down shift, select our boat shape, we can come up to path and down to difference to chop that out. And then we do the same with this one as well. So hold down shift, select the other triangle, come up to path, down to difference and chop it out. So I haven't actually drawn in the pole that she's using to um, move her boat so I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to do that using a rectangle tool. I'm just going to drag out a long, thin rectangle. Get my selection tool. We can click on it and we can rotate it so it. So hopefully we can get it in line with this one. So if I put it down here, I'm going to move my rotational center up to this end so that when we rotate it, it rotates around that end so we can line it up nicely. It's a little bit too long at the moment, so I think I'll go into the nodes tool. I'm going to drag a box over these two end nodes and select them. Ah, sorry, it's still a rectangle rather than rather than paths. So what I'm going to do is with it selected, I'm going to go up to path, object to path. And now if we go back to our nodes tool, now we've got two nodes on the end. So we can drag a box over the nodes and then we can just move them up into the boat and then we can hold down shift, select the boat shape and then we can come up to path and down to Union to join them together. So again, we can get rid of the photo behind. We don't need that anymore. So on this image, I'm going to use three different layers. I want to have a layer for these foreground mountains. I want to have a layer for the water and I'm going to have a layer for the background mountains or a path, should I say. So we start with the background mountains and then we can just draw out these mountains behind then go down behind all these other um, foreground mountains. So that's our first path. We draw out the next ones. So now we can trace around the clouds. I'm going to split them into three different clouds so I can spread them out in my image. So I'm going to select all of the nodes and I'm just going to change them to smooth nodes. So hopefully that's smoothed out the edge of our clouds. Oh, they don't look too bad. I think I'm quite happy with that. So we should have these three different cloud shapes. So again, we can select the background image and we can delete that. So now we can start building up our picture. So first thing I'm going to do is put our stalk into the image. I kind of want this coming up from the foreground. So somewhere down here, I might enlarge it slightly. So I'm going to hold down control, constrain the proportions, and then we can drag it up a touch. We zoom in just to make sure that his feet overlap the edge or his legs overlap the edge. So once we've got it where we want it, we can hold shift, select the layer we want to add it to, and then we can come up to path and down to union to join it all together. Okay, that didn't work. So in that case, I'm just gonna move it out the way. I've got a feeling some of these are grouped. So if we come in, we drag a box over the whole lot and we can just come up to ungroup at the top here. Click that a few times, make sure they're all ungrouped. If we click off, we should just better move this top layer now which seems to be working fine. So I'll press Control Z to pop it back. I'll grab my stalk, reposition him, and hopefully things will work this time. So holding down Shift, I'm going to select the top layer, and I'm going to come up to Path and down to Union. Ah, so that's worked. So we've got our stalk in position. Next, I think I'll put our boat in. So I think I like that position. So I'm going to hold down Shift. I'm going to select the layer that I want to add it to. And now I'm going to come up to path and down to union to add that in. So I think for the next bit, so what I'm going to do is just drag a few of these elements in. So you want our clouds. I'm just going to flip this one horizontally. I might rotate it slightly as well. So I'm holding control to constrain the proportions again. I'm just going to drag that down. Reduce the opacity of those so I can see what's going on below. 
So I'm just going to start going through and using Union I'm going to join together these elements with the background layers. So I'm going to undo that one, Control Z. We need to stretch the bottom out so if I select it I'm going to grab my nodes tool and then I'm going to drag a box over the bottom two nodes so we don't affect the top and then we can drag this down just so we're filling the whole of the square, our whole of our space. So now we can select them both and then go to Path and down to Union. So with this first cloud, I'm going to hold down Shift, select the top layer, I'm going to union it to that one. So Path down to Union, join it into the top. So this smaller cloud I want to attach to the next layer down, but I want to be able to see um, this end of the cloud. So I want this bit cut out as well. So what I'm going to do is select it, I'm going to press Ctrl D to duplicate it. And I'm going to hold down Shift, select our top layer, and this time I'm going to go to Path and down to Difference. So we cut this section out of the top path, and I'm going to select the next one down, hold down Shift, select the cloud, and then go to Path and down to Union. So what we get is a cutout section out of this one, and it joined to the background one at the back there. So I'm actually going to just get my Nodes tool, zoom in a touch, just rearrange this. It does look a little bit odd. So I've just tweaked this cloud slightly and moved it into position. This time I'm going to do it on the second layer down. So I want to chop out um, the cloud from these top two layers. So I have to duplicate it twice. So if we get our selection tool, I'm going to select the cloud. I'm going to press Ctrl D to duplicate once. Ctrl D to duplicate again. I'm going to hold down Shift, select the top layer. I'm going to come up to Path and down to Difference to chop it out. I'm going to select the next cloud. Select the next layer down and go to Path and down to Difference. I'm going to select the cloud again, select the next layer down, and I'm going to go to Path and down to Union. So this one appears to be going through all of them. So the next thing I think I need to do is put the sun in. So to create the sun, all I'm going to do is use our ellipse tool. If I hold down Control, I can pull out a perfect circle. So I'm going to get my selection tool. I'm going to hold down Shift, and I'm going to select the sky layer behind. And I can come up to Path and down to Difference. And that chops out a hole, uh, making the yellow layer visible at the back. So I think our image is looking fairly good. What I do want to do, though, is add a little bit more detail down the bottom. So we have some little tufts of grass, I think. So to do that, I'm going to come up and get my um, Bezier tool. If we come up to Shape, instead of None, I'm going to change that to Triangle In. So now, if we draw a line, press Enter, it creates this triangle. Again, this is using path effects, um, so we can change the width of it if we go into our nodes tool. So we select our nodes tool, we can adjust how wide we want it. Let's put the opacity up. We can also drag on the path, so we can create slightly different shapes. This is showing the normal path fill color at the moment. So what I'm going to do is press Ctrl D to duplicate it, get my selection tool, and I'm just going to drag it over to the side, because this is what we want. We don't want this filled copy here, so I'm just going to delete that one. Go back to our Nodes tool. I'm going to press Ctrl D just a few times to create. Not sure how many I've done. Clicked it a few times. Oh, that's it. So now we can just go through and position, shape our blades of grass as we want them. So I'm going to flip this one. And I'm going to flip this one. Click it again to get rotation handles, and we can rotate it. Oh, wrong one. Press Control D to get another blade. Control D. Flip this one. I'm going to click it on again, rotation handles, and then I'm going to position this one. I think that'll do me. So what I'm going to do is drag a box over all of them, and I'm going to go up to Path, Object to Path, so they're paths in their own right, and then we can go to Path and down to Union to join them all together. So I'm going to press Ctrl D to duplicate this. I'm going to use it a couple of times. So the first one I'm going to have at the foreground. It's a little bit too big, so I'm going to reduce it down. So I think that looks fairly good. And I might flip this one so it doesn't look too similar. Get my rotation handles. And I'm going to reduce the size of this quite a lot. So make it a little bit thinner. So I think I might just move this one over a touch. 
So I think I'm happy with that. So I'm going to hold down Shift, select the top layer and come up to Path, down to Union, join those two together. Then I'm going to select my other tuft, select the next layer down, holding down Shift, then go up to Path and Union those two together. So now I'm quite happy with our composition. I quite like how the layers have turned out so far. The next thing I want to do is give it the three dimensional look by adding the shadows to our different layers. The way I'm going to do that is just to just to drag a box over the top of all of our different paths so they're all selected. Then we're going to come up to filters, down to shadows and glows, and we want drop shadow. That opens up our shadow, our drop shadow dialog box. First thing I want to do is just turn on the live preview so we can see what's happening. And you can see already we've got this nice drop shadow. I've got both my offsets, horizontal and vertical offset, set to zero. At the moment my blur radius is 1.6. We can look at blur colour. And in here we can adjust the opacity of our shadows. We can also change the colour, but we'll leave it with black. So I think that gives us quite a lot of contrast and definition. So I think I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to press apply and we can get rid of our dialog box. Next thing I'm going to do is just group all these together. So I'm going to come up to the top, I'm going to press on the group and that groups all of our different layers together. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I don't like the drop shadow that's formed on the outside. It's very dark where it's layered up with all the different layers shadows. So I'm going to remove that by clipping it. So the way we clip is we need a clipping mask and we want a clipping mask the same size and shape as our square. So to make it nice and easy for us, I'm going to come up to our snapping dialog box. I'm going to ensure that we've got um, snapping to nodes enabled and cusp nodes, corner nodes. So with all that done, we can click off. I'm going to come over, grab my rectangle tool. I'm going to snap to this top corner and I'm going to just going to drag out a rectangle over the top of it all and snap to the bottom corner. So this is going to be our clipping mask. So if we change to our selection tool, I just zoom out a touch to make sure we get all of it. So I'm going to drag a box over the whole lot. So it's going to select our group of paths behind and it's selecting our clipping mask on top. So then we're going to go up to object, down to clip and over to set clip and that will clip away that shadow from around the outside. So all in all, I'm happy with this. Um, obviously, we can go in and we can change colours. So I've just duplicated my design a couple of times and I've just gone in and change the colours of the individual paths just to give a couple of different examples of what you can do with it. Hopefully you found that helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.